Well, today it seems like I'm doing this alone, and that's fine because I came prepared. Wherever this paper will be, I will be also. We're doing wheel report, Julian. It's a two-man operation. Alrighty. One man, two and a half. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, for the beard. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of manliness. I'm Miles Brandon. I'm Julian Melnick. I'm the enthusiast. I am not. This is Wheel Report. Car news you can use. Let's do it. All right. Can't see it. Let's start off. Yes. With a Miata. I don't like that. Why? I just don't like Mazdas. And the real reason is because I was playing Gran Turismo 2 on the PlayStation 2, and what happened was, you see, I was going, and this Miata cut me off, and it was like a 100 lap race. It took me about like 35 minutes. Cut me off, and ever since that point, Miatas and PT Cruisers, they, uh, they're the bane of my existence. Well, I agree about PT Cruisers, but yeah. that's just because they're an insult to the car world. Yeah. Miatas, on the other hand, are a gift to the car world. I don't think so. They are broadly praised by enthusiasts, but one of the complaints that people have- Wait, 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 you said enthusiasts? Enthusiasts. I'm not. Oh, well, no, we already did the intro. Oh, sorry. No. Enthusiasts love the Miata yes. because it is a lightweight, fun to drive car. It's slow car fast, effectively, meaning that you can have fun at any speed, and now you're gonna have fun at greater speeds because there's a report out that the next Miata, or not maybe even the next Miata, but they're just gonna do an upgrade to the Miata, that it's going to make more power from its 2.0 liter Skyactiv G engine. Um, it's gonna go from 155 to 181 horsepower. Which that's, is that's sizable. Yeah, for a, for a car, car that small. That small, that yeah. light, yeah, that will be a yeah. big increase in power. Um, don't yeah. get me wrong, I don't think the Miata is a bad vehicle, I just think it's the worst vehicle. I just don't like them. And because I'm not an enthusiast, I don't like them. That hurts. It's okay, you have one. I do, I do own one. Yeah. I race it, and yeah. it's great, and mm -hmm. it's fun. It's also, fun. another thing about this uh, faster Miata, more powerful Miata, is it will have a higher red line. Now it'll be 7,500 RPM, so you can really ring it out. Versus what? It's like 6,500 right oh, now. okay. That's good, yeah. that's cool. It's a... I mean, from, the, from a practical standpoint, that sounds great. That sounds really fun. Yeah. I'll never, ever. Um, complete opposite end mm -hmm. of the spectrum here. Uh, do you know, what is the Humvee to you? The Humvee is a vehicle that I would like to ride in if I ever went into a territory where someone didn't like me. Accurate, correct. Yes. I will accept that answer. They are very armored, mm. very, very protective. Mm -hmm. And to be quite honest, I think they're really cool. But you know how I feel about giant vehicles that you can live out of and that you can potentially mount a 50 caliber machine gun to, mm -hmm. uh, even better too, Yeah, I like them. Is that why you don't like the Miata? Because you can't mount a 50 no. cal? because the 50 cal machine gun weighs more than the Miata. That's, that's such a true point. They yeah. don't engineer them for that. That's no. really unfortunate. And that is why I don't maybe, like the Miata. Maybe that should be on the next generation. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you are correct. Yeah. Uh, that, that's a great reason why you should like the Humvee. But they are, were getting a little outdated. They were. They were old as heck, and I can't believe it. They've been around for it. decades. Yeah, they, when they were... Do you know what the Humvee stands for? No. High mobility, multi-purpose, wheeled vehicle, as opposed to an unwheeled vehicle, mm. I suppose. But like that's about H-M-M-W-V, and that's where the Humvee comes from. And yeah. so it doesn't actually, it's, it's not an acronym for H-U-M-V-E. It's H-M-M with a... Humvee, Humvee, Humvee. Anyway, yes. um, not to get too sidetracked, uh, they're making a new version because the uh, you know the military's been using the Humvee for a long time, yeah. but they had a contract renewal a couple of years ago, and because the the current Humvee was getting on in years and wouldn't really you know it didn't have a payload capacity, it couldn't really go as many places as they wanted it to. The AM general who builds the Humvee lost that military contract worth nearly seven billion dollars to Oshkosh and their light all-terrain vehicle, which Wait, could do everything better than Oshkosh. the Humvee. Oshkosh. 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 It is. Say it again. Oshkosh. 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 Gotcha. Oh, you got me. I said the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, so there's a new AM general produced Humvee, a new version of it, uh, called the NXT 360. That just rolls off the tongue. It's upgraded in effectively every way, so I don't really care what it's called. I want one. It, yeah. I want one. Okay, yeah, I haven't even told you about it yet. It doesn't matter, I want one, because I could live out of it and mount a 50 caliber machine gun to it. Those are your qualifications. That's all I need. Okay, well, anyway, it has a new 6.5 liter turbo diesel V8 that makes 250 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque. That's a lot. It can move. It can really move. Yeah. And it's got a lot of protection for the defensive front. Um, Fun fact, what? one of my first jobs was putting 
10 screws and 10 bolts into little baggies and seal them shut for a government contract on Windows for Humvees. I didn't know that. Yeah. I really didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Cool. It was really, really cool. And I got to see these and the windows were two inches thick. Now we're getting to the good stuff. Yeah. It has an AM General's Enhanced Tactical Indirect ETI system, which is a 105 millimeter cannon. Told you. With soft recoil. Yeah, soft recoil. Soft recoil. With supple recoil. It doesn't mean that it no, it's doesn't still recoil. going to kick you it like, a, like a mule. Yeah, exactly. It's mounted to a vehicle, so you know you can't hold it. Oh, no, absolutely not. Yeah, um, yeah but this Humvee can. Yeah. And it also, the cannon shoots eight rounds per minute Yikes. for three minutes, and then it's got to just chill for a sec. Anyway, that's the new Humvee, and JD worked on some kind of. I was like, indirectly. 15 years ago, my oh, first job. Yeah, eight years ago. I don't know why I said that. Um, completely unrelated, uh, Byton, have you heard of them? No. It's a Chinese electric vehicle startup, uh. and they've got a new concept model that they are revealing. They had a, what they call the M-Byte, which was a electric- Small bite. No, an M-Byte. Omega Byte. Yeah, I, I guess they're doing a play on that, but um, it was a crossover and all electric and had all these semi-autonomous capabilities. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing about that is it had a 49 inch uh, display that went right in the dashboard. So it went all across the dashboard from end to end. Okay, okay. How is that not distracting? Well, if the vehicle is operating autonomously, then all you're doing is having basically a living room. And so you've got like this cool TV in your living room. It's crazy. Yeah. But obviously, so you know. So dangerous. So dangerous. If it's not operating autonomously, then yes, you are really in trouble. Yeah. But anyway, that was the M-Byte. This is the K-Byte. Oh, Kilobyte. Kilobyte, yes, yeah, exactly. Smaller. Um, it is. And yeah. it's designed around uh, level four autonomous capability. Uh, um, what is the Tesla model, like what is the Tesla? Tesla's like a three, uh, level three oh, autonomous Oh, so it's a little bit better than that? Yeah, two to three. Oh, so it's better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, they want to have level five capability, but they're what, what, waiting for that. What's level? Is level five one hundred percent safe? Yes. Oh, okay. level level four and five is effectively the car is completely driving itself. There is just the difference of you, level five. You can't do anything. Like you can't take over. Mm. Level four, you can take over, but the car can still drive itself. That's crazy. Yeah. A little more on this one. Uh, the well, we we don't know what it's going to be priced, but considering. Uh, Byton was saying it, the M byte is going to be like forty-five thousand dollars, and that's a bigger vehicle. That's going to rival the Model X, uh, which is seventy-five thousand dollars. My um, neighbor just got one. I'm thinking the K. Did you? Yeah, cool, that's cool. Um, I'm thinking the K byte will probably be less. I would hope so. So I'm thinking like thirty, so around the Model 3's price territory. Cool. But um, it's all sort of uh, who knows if whether it's going to happen because they could be a Faraday future and just sort of sizzle and then fade. Are they going to come here? They are, yeah. Uh, they they showed it. these vehicles um, first at the at CES um, oh. a couple of years ago, and now wow. now they really want they want to bring it to the U.S. market. So cool. we will see. Uh, next up is ooh, this one's another one where I want to I want to hear your opinion about okay. something. Okay, but so it. Toyota has patented an airbag helmet. Mm. Um, that's not what they're calling it. It's what I'm calling it. It's basically a, a device that comes out of the back of the seat headrest oh, I've seen and this. protects your head in the event of crash. So your head's not going ever all over the place. Even the airbag coming at you can't protect your head from going to the side yeah. or whatever. But a helmet, an airbag helmet, and this thing looks really cool in the patent drawings, protects you from all that movement. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I think it's really cool. That is extremely cool. But here's the thing: um, they don't have any plans to make it commercially available. Like it's not in their immediate plans. They may do it, um, but because it's a patent for this design. No one else can do it. No one else can do it. At least not the way they've oh, done it. Maybe you I can have get mixed, around. I have mixed feelings. Okay, so so I'll start. Like my issue with that is it is a piece of safety equipment that could effectively save lives or at the very least reduce um, injury yeah. in an accident. I think reduce injury would be totally. Great. Yeah. But so now because they patented, no one else can do this, and I kind of issue with that. I think maybe safety equipment patents are sort of not okay. Patent yeah. anything else for you know commercial success and stuff like that. But safety equipment? I don't know, what do you think? Uh, I think it's smart. I mean, it's a great way to keep the money in their pockets. Yeah. Um, and Toyota being a very reputable brand, so, you know, they're gonna get even more. Uh, man, I don't know. I really don't know. I have mixed feelings only because since it's not coming to 
the public yet, my thought is it's not perfected, which means if you have an ex a micro explosion going out behind your head, yeah. if you're not in the proper position, that micro explosion could, if you're leaning too far forward, that helmet could miss and push you even further forward. So the fact it's not being released yet just screams it's not ready. The patent idea, I don't know. I, I don't know, maybe they, I mean, selfishly they might be wanting to keep the money or maybe they just don't want someone else to screw it up. Yeah, but do, do they have the right to say I don't know. like another yeah. company couldn't develop this better? Like I like the points you make are very good. You're right. If if it's not ready, it shouldn't be released no, because it, it could cause more problems. It's an explosion. That's but, what happens. But if someone, if they were like, it's not patented. Here's our design. And other companies have done this. They haven't patented things. They've come up with something that they think is good for the public. And they're like, hey, we want to release this that so that people who are smart, maybe even smarter than us, can help refine yeah. this product and help save lives or help reduce injuries. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you make a really good point with that. I, safety equipment probably should not be pat patentable. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with you on that one. Okay. Yeah. But then you wonder at that point, like, will they stop working on those devices if they can't patent it and can't make money from it? Yeah. It's like I mean, such a weird cycle. It is. And I'm, I'm sure that they'll sell more of their vehicles that have to do with like family oriented things with that. Like you hear uh, like an airbag helmet coming out. I know that a mom and dad, I mean me, for instance, when I have a child that's gonna drive, if I'm looking for a vehicle that they are going to be getting, yeah. that would be a feature that I would absolutely look at and be like, okay, that car over this one because of that one safety sure. technology. Yeah, and if it's been proven and they're like, oh my gosh, like yeah. the, these safety tests have been done and this reduced injury by like mm -hmm. 80%, like, yeah, you're gonna go buy that one car for that. And you know, like, let's put two of the very like automakers, Toyota and Honda, yeah. they're, they're everyday sedans, the Accords, the Civics, the Corolla, and the Camry, Camrys, yeah. um, they are always placed head to head. And yeah. I think that one safety feature could, 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 completely, could completely decimate yeah. the other one in business. No, you're right. You're right. That is a very good point. So if they release it to the public and let's say Honda just has the right people behind it and they yeah. get it before Toyota, Toyota's done. Yeah. It's it's sort of a moral versus, you know, yeah. like financial gain uh, question there. I, but, I mean, I also am curious what people yeah. think about this one. I don't think them patenting it is slowing down the release. I will say that. Yeah. No. I, I think that it's right. just uh, isolating the technology to them only. And uh, there are also ways to get around patents. Mm -hmm. Like another company could design something similar. Um, Mildly different. Yeah. It's just sort of the patent thing. It's like, I don't know. I just feel weird about patenting it's a, something it's that, weird. Could, that could be saving lives. Or something. It's very, it's a, biz, it's a bizarre moral dilemma. From yeah. a moral standpoint, seems, seems not, not, not so good. good. Yeah. But from a, uh, business standpoint, commercial, yeah. commercial uh, smart move. <laughs> totally, totally. All right, well, speaking of safety stuff, yes. and this is our last story here, a mm. um, couple of vehicles are being proven as not so safe. Because they're driver bias. Well, yes, right. So um, the IIHS, Shame on you. the IIHS, the um, uh, Institute for, uh, no, Insurance, Insurance Institute, Institute for Highway, highway safety. safety. Wow, that's a lot of- Do it you know, again. Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. There you go, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. They introduced a test um, that has been mimicked by other agencies um, called the Side Overlap Test. And it's basically to prove that automakers had been doing you know, good protection for the driver for these small overlap tests, but on the passenger side, there's just not that same reinforcement. And so they were seeing in their tests like real damage being done to people nice. on that side. And so they're putting these cars to these tests and it's been a, a, a stumbling block for a lot of automakers. Mm -hmm. But here are a couple of vehicles that you would think, based on the size and nature of the vehicle, yeah. that they would be very safe. Ford Explorer and Jeep Grand Cherokee what? both got poor ratings in this test. Um, and poor for them is like very life-threatening and damaging. Um. This is not kind of the news they want for this one. Oh, and Ford has already come out saying like, the next generation Explorer is gonna be so much better in this Good. test. And you're like, that's great to hear. Um, I guess don't go buy a current one. Like that's, yeah, that's, I, the, that's the moral I like I like that these are happening and you know, um, I can't help but think that in in the room, they're just like, you know what, we can, it's just the passenger side. We can kind of skip out on this a little right, bit. Yeah, that's a bummer to me. That is that especially is, in a family vehicle. You're always gonna have a passenger. It's not. Yeah, it, SUVs. It, any of those. Like yeah. you have to reinforce all of the sides. Yes. Um, but I am glad that they got stuck with this because that means that they are going to be pushing out vehicles that are more safe. Yep. They're going to be forced, basically forcing their hand to uh, to really improve that technology. That's good because yeah. now they have not only to 
answer the test and be like, we have to bring this up to standard, but now they have to answer to the public who now are finding out th about this. Yep. And they're not only gonna have to bring it up to standard, but they're gonna have to go even further than that to gain back trust. Yep. So it's gonna become a really safe vehicle. Yep. I yep. like that. So, uh, yeah, yeah, so I like I guess, the Explorer. Yeah, I do too, I do. It's like a good news, bad news situation for these automakers yeah. then. Um, I would maybe say, you know, like maybe hold off on the current generation Explorer um, if you can. Uh, and the Jeep Grand Cherokee was the same issue. Um, but, but if you're getting a Jeep, get a ring. Yeah. Um, if you'll excuse me, I have to go do some gardening um, yeah. over there and um, I'll make some noise for you. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate it. Cool. All right, guys. That's all we have for you today. I was Julian Melnick. That was Miles Bramman. And uh, he's doing it. Uh, yeah. He's doing it. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a dolphin. Cool.